Deli, have you a look know, at that. Just, just twist your neck and have a look at that one. So that was four games to go after that game. You got within five of Leicester. I think we were all asking the question whether they were going to slip up. Were you asking the same question within the camp? Did you think it was achievable even at this stage? Yeah. Um, I don't know when we stopped thinking it was possible. I don't know. I can't remember when it stopped being possible, but we it was after the with, Chelsea. We with West Brom and then, and then it was um, at, yes. at Chelsea. So I got banned after the West Brom game, probably showing my age when I punched the guy. And then <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got banned after West Brom. So I missed the Chelsea game. Well, um, even that, was that because of the tension, because of the pressure? No, I think it was just stupid, me being stupid. I think, um, and that was one of the moments that I felt like, OK, this is when me and Poch really, like, because I thought he was going to, like, hammer me and, like, he called me into his office and I was like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Yeah, like, and then he called me in and he, I don't know if he would want me to say, but he, like, just showed me a clip of him getting sent off and, like, we had a laugh about it. Because um, he knew it weren't, like, it's not my character, it was just... Yeah, a rush of blood in the moment. I, I mean, we all loved that team in terms of watching them play. The f great football, it was intense, it was aggressive. But you were probably in the best Tottenham team there's been, probably going back to the mid-80s, when you know, we were in FA Cups and UEFA Cups. Now, we've always... Also, there's a feeling in football that Tottenham always lacks something when it comes to the real, the big game, to get over the line. And that was a great side, but it couldn't quite get over the line, whether it was a league title, whether it was an FA Cup semi-final, whether it was the Champions League final that you mentioned before. Was that... What do you put that down to? That, that team should have won something. Yeah, it's tough to say. I've, like, we had... When I think back to it, we had, like... We was the best team at the time, I would say. You know, we would go to everyone and we would try and beat them and we would never, like, change our game for anyone. We would try and dominate everyone. I mean, there was a lot of great teams, but, um, yeah, I just felt so confident. Wherever I looked, you know, we had Harry up top. Musso who was the best player I've ever seen or played with. Was we had player? Eric, yeah, we had Ericsson, like, we had uh, Kyle Walker and Danny Rose on the, as fullback. It was, like, such a strong team everywhere. We had three single. Um, we, like, there was just moments where we just felt, OK, we just need this one more thing to, like, this one player that can, like, really push us on. And that never happened. And it was just kind of, like, disappointing for everyone. What was the greatest disappointment? Was it, was it that season that we've just shown? Or was it actually the season after when you had the best defence in the league, the best attack in the league as well, statistically, yeah. but still weren't able to get over the line? Uh, I don't know which one was. They were both tough to take. That was the Antonio Conte Chelsea. They had a fabulous run under him. Yeah, they was. Uh, I mean, with t in like this one, Chelsea were like going on uh, unbelievable runs, and like you know, you'd watch their football and be like, okay. The last one was tough because like after a game, we'd, we'd be like three 0 up at half time, and we'd like go on our phones, look at their result, and they'd be like it's 0-0. and then we're coming after a game, they've scored last minute, and make it one 0 and we're like, how long is this going to go on for? Like that one was harder because it was kind of like the whole season. We were like. OK, 5-1. After the game, they've won 1-0 own goal. And it's like, <laughs> this is going to keep happening. But. So when we're talking career highlights for you, are we talking about you in a Spurs shirt, Champions League final, or are we talking about England in a World Cup semi-final? Uh, I'd say the Champions League, obviously, was good and bad. Um, it was amazing to get to the final, but to lose against Liverpool the way we did it, it was, it was very tough. That was an amazing moment. Um, the whole season of like that year when we was with Leicester and the season after with Chelsea, with that team, that whole thing, that whole them two seasons were like okay, they were for me two amazing seasons. Um, and then for England, obviously the, the World Cup. Uh, so yeah, I'd say probably them ones from the top of my head. Obviously I had the the Euros when I was young, uh, when we lost to Iceland. That was. <laughs> but it was obviously a great moment for me playing in my first tournament as like a as a kid. Um, but yeah, not, I wouldn't say that was a highlight. <laughs> Listen, you've had loads of time to reflect on it all um, over the last couple of years, Delhi. What what's your head at in terms of thinking about why perhaps you weren't able to maintain those levels that we saw from those earlier years at Spurs? Uh, I think a lot of different things off the pitch. Um, I think I spoke about it in my interview. I think. Don't want to go over it too much again, but um, I know the, my level as a player. Um, I know what I can get to. I know uh, how good I can be when my head's in the, the right place, and you know I'm feeling good. Obviously disappointed with the injury right now, but yeah, I'm just excited to to get playing again. It's hard for me to even watch football, like because I've come on here and watched that, but it's just been tough for me. Like this, 
past, say, eight months has been hard to watch. Um, what, what, what type of level do you think you can get back to? You know, you've, you've obviously had problems, but you've been out for a long time, injury this season. I mean, do you think you can get back to what you were? I mean, I hope so. I have a reminder, you know, like you can set reminders on your phone. I have like a reminder every 11 o'clock every day, World Cup 2026. So that's my like aim for now. I think people would be like, oh, he hasn't played in a year, but I don't care. That's my, I know where my level is. So, so the situation is you're out of contract this summer. Uh, you will be a free agent. What sort of club are you thinking? What, what are we talking about here? You're, you're 28, or you just turned 28. So, you know, in theory, there is a lot, a lot of time ahead. But where are you setting your, your targets? Uh, the only target I have is the World Cup for now. I think, obviously, I'm injured right now. I'm signed to Everton. Um, so my mind is just take it day by day, make sure my, heal, my injury heals right, make sure I'm in the best possible condition after summer. Um, Do you think you'll be fit for the pre-season? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll be like, it's annoying because I'll be like just fully training as the season's ending. So I'm like, OK, it gives me like, it's annoying, but also, you know, as a player, like when you're getting close, you want to push yourself and like, I think maybe that's what happened the first time. Like I got too close and I was like, OK, I'm there. Let me just push it, like showing in the test, like, OK, I'll, I'll do the running test. Like I'll get like top end of the team, even though I've been injured. Like I want to like push on and push on and show that I'm there. And like, it's, sometimes you just need to like relax and be like, OK, let's not rush this. You know, when you think it's sort of what level you can get back to, and I know obviously you've got a target that's a, a couple of years away, and I wouldn't actually di divulge interest from other clubs, but, I mean, are the Premier League clubs actually showing interest in you right now in terms of, you know, coming back and starting pre-season? Because obviously there's not long to go of the season. Before you know it, you're back in pre-season. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm signed to Evan. I think it'll be disrespectful to speak about anything else whilst I'm right here. Um, and I'm, they've been so amazing with me. And, you know... I don't know if that's off the cards to be the next season. I don't know that yet. So um, I'm not going to talk about any of that because, yeah, they're a club that's been amazing and I don't know the details of that situation. But, you know, I want to stay in the Premier League. I want to be at the highest level playing against the best players. So. Is the right manager important to you as well? I mean, you, we've talk, you've heard you talking with affection <laughs> about Mauricio Pochettino, for example. Um, maybe not as much now as it was before. I think, especially with this injury, it's, like, I don't know if you had any long-term injuries. Yeah, 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 a couple, yeah. yeah, yeah it's not like great. It's, it's, easy, it's, it? it's difficult, but with the process I went through in the summer, it's almost like that got me ready for this. And, like, I've been able to, even in the toughest times during this, like, I can't lie and say, it's oh, yeah, it's been all easy. Like, I've been happy the whole time. Like, there's been some dark days during this, but I've been able to, like, process them days and allow myself to you know, experience that feeling and channel it into like the right reasons and it's done nothing but made me want to get back to the top more. So I'm like, okay, I just need to take a breath sometimes and like relax and work towards what my end goal is, well, the next few years and use this as a reason, as a learning tool for me. And uh, yeah, I think it's just exciting. Even like maybe some players would panic and be like, oh, like I'm, I'm out of contract in the summer and, you know, I've had a, an injury for a year and a half, but I'm like, this is a great opportunity for me to show myself and show what an amazing story it has been and what it's going to continue to be. And I think going through this just makes when I do get back to the top even better. So it's like, OK, I just want to get there. It'd be an absolutely amazing story. What you, you know, some of the things we've seen there, some of the things you've done, Obviously, it hasn't gone your way in the last couple of years, but, I mean, to see Dele Alli back at the top level scoring goals, I think what a story that would be. Dele, the redemption. <laughs> the final chapter. Yeah, the wait will be worth it, so I'm just... We are, we've all got our fingers crossed for you, Dele, honestly. I think, I think everyone in football really <laughs> wants to see that happen as well, so we wish you well with it. 